everyone, and welcome to today's PECV webinar called Quality 4.0. How can quality management processes benefit and adapt in the digital era? My name is Sofia Dirini. I am a policy manager at Access Partnership, an ICT consultancy based in London, and I work in the compliance and market access team. So thank you very much for joining us today for I'm sure, for what I am sure, it will be a very insightful session. During one hour, we will be discussing trends, challenges, and future and current impact of digitalization in quality management processes. Today, I have the pleasure to moderate this session that will count with the participation of three experts in the field. Dr. Ralph Shadowski, he's a, the founder and CEO of ADAG, and he's a specialist in data protection and information security. He's also the CEO of ITSEC, that together with ADAG are part of Swiss IT Security Group, formed by 600 cyber experts. Dr. Shadowski has more than 30 years of experience in data protection, and he's data protection officer for more than 400 organizations together with his team. Then, so thank you, thank you very much, Doctor, for joining us today. You're welcome. Then I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Trishid Srinivasan. Uh, who is recognized? Who is a recognized industry thought leader with several years of experience in business and operational excellence? His major areas of work are agile, software quality, lean, and data science. Presently, as global director of continuous improvement at Schneider Electric, he leads the agile business transformation initiative of uh, Schneider Industrial Automation Business. Previously, he was the Director of Business Excellence and Head of the Agile Consulting Business at KPMG in India. He led and executed transformational client engagements leveraging Agile, CMMI Lean Sigma, and data science to improve business outcomes such as agility, customer satisfaction, productivity, cost optimization, quality, and on time delivery. His primary focus is on technology and industrial engineering sectors and has global exposure in leading and executing client engagement. Uh, Trishir has a bachelor's degree in electronic and communication, a master in information system management, and a PhD in management science. He has published several articles and research papers in premium journals of Wiley and under science and has delivered talks at various national and international industry conferences. Um, he loves being a public speaker and trainer in quality and agility and has trained thousands of professionals in multiple disciplines. His academic areas of interest include intelligent quality, leadership in agile and business agility. So thank you very much, Trishit, for being with us today as well. Thank you, Sophia. And finally, I would like to welcome Mr. Sheriff Galel. He's the head of GRC at TSS, a lecturer at NAT and at the Arab Academy for Management, Banking and Financial Sciences. He is also CQI and IRCA auditor, and he's an excellence assessor and, tra and trainer. Moreover, Sharif is PECV Management System Auditor with long experience in planning, managing, and supporting information security and technology development. He's responsible for assessing and ensuring risk-based approach compliance within organization and policies and security standards like, uh, for example, like ISO 20001, 20002, etc. So thank you very much again to, to the three of you to, uh, for being us today with us and for sharing your knowledge and your wisdom uh, with me and with the audience. Thank you, Sofia. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. So now that the audience know you all a little bit better, I think we can go directly into the substance of this webinar. So um, I would like to start with uh, Dr. Shadowski. 
and I would like to ask you, in the digital era, why are suitable platforms important to help ensuring uniform implementation in larger and distributed organizations? So, say first, thank you very much to PCB for taking me onto this panel. Great honor to me, and hopefully, I can give you some inf important information on your on the topics. From my point of view, the industrial world is constantly facing new challenges. Our resources are finite, and we all need to do more with less, of course. Digitalization and automation are game changers to master these challenges on the way to Industry 4.0. It is necessary to collect, understand, and to use huge amounts of data generated to industrial Internet of Things. We call it IIoT, of course. It is a matter of connecting the real world with the digital world, and the result is infinite amounts of data that enable us to limit the resources efficiently and make industry more sustainable. From this point of a, of a data protection officer, you know, I'm running this since years, this business, we have conducted more than 1,000 audits, assessments in the last 10 years, and I have accompanied numerous medium-sized companies and corporations and big corporations in the development over years I note data volumes are exploding, and only a few companies of them are able not only to manage this volume of data, but also to develop new business ideas and new jobs from it. So it's, they cannot handle this uh, huge amount of data, especially in companies with several locations, and now came to the management systems over, especially in companies with several locations or several companies, several, you know, the spread all over the world, I recognize the search for a pragmatic solution to implement regulatory and contractual requirements in the area of information security and compliance. And you know, data protection is just part of IT compliance. And here, uniform and comprehensive implementation is also impossible without the use of suitable platforms. We need this kind of platforms to get a special level of um, fulfillment in, in the um, compliance uh, questions. The use of such platforms are not only supports data protection and compliance officer in mere of performance of the task, but offer the company the opportunity to standardize also their processes throughout the company and those reduce the costs and the errors. This is where classic quality management from my perspective and modern platforms meets because resulting in integrated management systems is so, is so important. The integrated management systems is a key. So now if it's not only about information security, it's also about environment aspects and quality aspects and bring all the management systems together, it saves a lot of efforts. As a pleasant side effects, efforts are reduced and the standards um, always entail an overlap of similar requirements. In this way, we save more than 20 to 30 percent of the total efforts quickly by combining these management systems. Right now, in this moment, I spent my full day in an assessment um, with a big company here in Germany. Um, they gave me just a room um, beside to take take part here in this panel, and uh, we're setting up, of course, an information system, uh, an information security management system, as part of an integrated management system. So also this company takes the um, advantage to save money and effort. So um, it's very important. Um, we need to find a suitable platform to bring all those facts together. And this helps, of course, ensuring the uniform implementation all over this company and many others. Thanks. Thank you very much. That was very clear, and I'm sure it will give a lot of food for thought to the audience and to myself as well. Um, now, Mr. Trishid, uh, I would like to continue with you. And what is the role and the impact of the quality function in the era of digital transformation, in your opinion? Thanks uh, for that question, Sophia. And uh, thanks, BCB, for this platform and allowing us uh, for to converse on this very important uh, initiative. Uh, for answering the question on the role of quality in digital transformation, uh, I believe it is uh, useful if you put in perspective what is digital transformation, especially uh, for quality professionals. If you look at the big picture of what uh, the, the current 
era that we are going through is we are actually going through a revolution of several things. Uh, we had the industrial revolution in the 18th century, uh, the age of steel and heavy engineering in the 19th century, then started mass production in the 20th century, and, and we saw this uh, you know, mass production of goods, mass production of uh, manufacturing items, and all of the manufacturing industry really thrived. And from which several of the management standards that we have have originated, uh, including the ISO standards, including some of the Six Sigma standards, uh, continuous improvement philosophies. All of these were byproducts of this uh, uh, manufacturing. Maybe I can proceed with a question for Sharif, and then we go back to you. In the meantime, please check the, what happened with the microphone because it was working fine, and suddenly we we stopped listening to you. So. Um, so let me maybe move quickly to to Sharif. I will go with you, and once uh, our colleague Trishir is back, I will go back to this question. But something I wanted to to discuss with you, I wanted to hear your opinion, Sharif, is about the links between quality management and cybersecurity, which is a very hot topic lately. Um, so I would like to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this area from your own experience about uh, the relationship between quality management and information and cybersecurity? Uh, thank you, Sophia. In my opinion, and uh, as Dr. Arf said, uh, quality management is related to everything. It's not related to some part. If the organization are going for the quality, it should be uh, manage the quality all over the organization from top to the bottom and everywhere. So the quality management uh, has relation with everything, especially now we are talking about the information security uh, and the new era of the digital transformation uh, the new model of business changing, the customer needs are changing, the, um, our competitors, uh, the, and more application, more platforms, and as also Dr. Raf say, the new platforms, the new platforms need what we are going. Um, both uh, of quality management, information and cybersecurity, has to understand these relations and accept it uh, of each other. So now we have three main terms, quality management, information security, and cyber, and the relation between them. Uh, we can see there is a common structure of ISO standards between the quality management, if we talk about 9001, and the ISO for uh, 2001 ISMS, and even ISO 2000.32 for the cybersecurity. There is many cross-cut uh, clauses uh, between them. So again, I will agree with Rolf in many points about the integrated manuals, the integrated. If we are going to make uh, an equality, let's make it integrated. Why I have to start making uh, information security quality, uh, cyber security quality, then I have to collect it. It's beginning. Uh, there is many cross-cut uh, clauses. We can talk about 5.1 leadership and the commitment, 6.2, what is the objective, um, 7.5 document information, uh, 9.2 internal audit, which can be one uh, process for all the integrated manual, uh, 9.3 the management review and how this is due. Um, for, in my experience, what we call the integrated manual is the best way to practice this relation. Um, information security and cyber security is not the concept of adding more security solution. Let's not put more devices. It's not like this. It's uh, related also to how we are going to manage this, how we are going to put the documentation for this, what is the rules and the responsibility for this device, how people are going to do. So it's not related to just put more uh, locks, put more devices. Um, and if you are going to put this control, how are we going to edit it? How are we going to use it with effect and efficiency controls? And also, uh, a good point, uh, how we are going to uh, talk the, with the top management about the return of investment in these controls? Because um, in most of the time, people look for information security and the quality management at a cost. It must be a cost benefit. No, if I give you, if I spend the money for the quality, 
uh, this is will return uh, an investment for you. Uh, it's not I'm taking money, uh, and this is is uh, a problem in both in information security and in the quality management because uh, we always go as a quality manager or information security manager for the top management. Ask them we we need to implement, we need to change, we need we need we need. So I think it's one of the needs uh, in digital era. It's to explain to the top management how we this is will affect the business model how this is going to affect our quality uh, maybe it's not clear in the product quality if, or the service quality but it will be clear uh, for our investment how we are going to compete with other competitors in the market um, i can summarize this all in the, the relationship is the most uh, we can to control the information security without the quality management. We have to put a quality management on top of the information security, on top of everything. Uh, the quality uh, management process is from top to bottom, and it should be uh, a culture of the organization, not a process. This is my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Um I don't know now. Maybe let's try to see if we can hear. I can, I can try. Uh, is my voice coming through? Yeah. Perfect. perfect. Thank um, you. I was talking about digital and uh, technology has failed me. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, I, I'll just uh, build up from what I uh, was talking about previously. Uh, the era that we are going through uh, is an era of transformation. It's an era, actually an era of revolution. Uh, it's an every, uh, era of evolution of information, evolution of technologies, several of the digital technologies, and so on. If you look back a little while earlier, uh, we were having the industrial revolution around us, and based on which several of these management ideas, several of these quality principles came into existence, including the likes of ISO, uh, likes of Six Sigma, Lean. Uh, many of these methodologies originated uh, in the manufacturing era for the industrial world. Some of it are working beautifully now. But if you really look at it pragmatically, uh, what we see in terms of the three dimensions of people, process, and technology in the current digital transformation era is a little bit different from what we used to see from a total industrial setting, especially in the manufacturing context. From a people point of view, <clears throat> unlike uh, we having dedicated departments for uh, for managing quality, for bringing in improvements. We are now seeing, uh, increasingly seeing the top leaders, starting from the CEO, taking a lead in transformation. Also in the people sector, we, we see a massive need for people to reskill and upskill, and, and primarily reskill, it's not even upskilling, but reskilling to totally different areas, which will make them more relevant, more prominent in the current uh, digital era that we're talking about. In terms of uh, the processes, I think uh, Sharif covered it beautifully well. You, you cannot disengage the security aspect from the uh, quality aspect. Uh, both of it is interconnected. We are, we are living in a, a cyber physical world, and every day there are threats to cyber security, threats to our data, uh, threats to our pri privacy. So these are some things that we have to be cognizant about uh, when, we, uh, when we define and uh, improve our processes. Also, I think a traditional way of quality management has given way to a more adaptable, more agile way of working, which will help organizations to reinvent themselves, uh, constantly be relevant in the eyes of the customer and bring them value uh, to their products. And finally, in terms of technology, uh, as I mentioned, we are currently living in a cyber physical world. M many things around us, it's a combination of uh, physical items plus uh, digital items. Uh, take Uber, for example. Uh, while the car and the driver is a physical entity, uh, we operate and look into that uh, physical entity through digital system, through a, as simple as an app in our cell phone. We can see the navigation of the, of the car, we can see the rating of the driver, we can see the possible fare. All of these are available to us. So that's the power that the customer of today has. Now, in this context, how should quality uh, be, what's the role that quality uh, can play? Uh, it is very significant that we, it's very important that we transform ourselves to this uh, growing needs of the business. Uh, we were used to uh, audit 
we were used to reviews we were looking at uh, used, used to management reviews which may give us a totality of the organization which is extremely important but what the quality professionals of today uh, are facing is uncertainty in every single thing uh, customers changing their priorities requirements not being able to frozen uh, whatever uh, degree of uh, certainty we speak about uh, also people are uh, kind of taking quality as granted you don't expect any single product that you buy from amazon or any other uh, platform which is which is defective you take quality for granted so that's the level of uh, level of uh, perfection that the customer is demanding uh, when it comes to quality product so to summarize uh, my argument all i can say is that we should have uh, we, we should embrace uncertainty in the way in which it is and have more adaptable processes which will suit that uncertainty we should possibly have self governing and self sustaining systems which will give us an entire idea of flow right from customers requirement to the time where we are producing value or to a product so these are some of the things that quality professionals can really migrate to wonderful and we we could hear you 100% so that's great I have a follow-up question for you, uh, Srishir. You were talking about these constant changes in the in the field, in the industry, and that connects to my next questions about uh, people who deliver this kind of work. And I would like to to hear from you. What would you say are the skills and the competencies that quality professionals should have uh, should have yes to address the expectations of Industry 4.0? And maybe, even though I am addressing this question to you, but Sharif and uh, Ralph, if you want to add something, because I think this is a very interesting question coming from people with a large experience and impressive CVs like you. So if you also have thoughts on this, please, uh, maybe after Trisha, we, we can also hear your, your point of view and your ideas as well. Sure. Thank you, Sophia. You brought about a very, very important uh, aspect uh, in this entire thing. Uh, and I believe that's uh, what is important, uh, what, that's what is of interest to our, uh, our listeners of this webinar as well. Uh, how do we transform? And in fact, uh, please don't take this as an advice. It includes uh, me also as an individual. I'm also a quality professional. So this is a transformation that I also need to go through and uh, uh, you know evolve uh, myself uh, in, in terms of skills and competencies needed to succeed uh, in the digital era. Uh, I will answer this question in this particular way. Some some years back, I did a survey uh, to understand how quality professionals are spending time. Uh, some very startling um, kind of revelations I had based on this uh, survey. Uh, if if I if I could picture this as a pie chart, uh, roughly around 60% of the time, uh, some of the quality professionals uh, whom I interviewed, whom I surveyed, are spending on their desk. Uh, you know, in, in their workstation, confined to their area of work. Uh, roughly about 15, 20 percent of the time, uh, they are with the delivery functions. Uh, you know, directly helping the delivery functions. Be it can be manufacturing, it can be uh, you know software, it can be hardware, whichever uh, delivery that we're speaking about. Another 20 percent quality functions uh, professionals spend uh, with their peer groups uh, to to learn, share, uh, coordinate, collaborate. Uh, I think which is good. The, the problem is the time that they spent with customers is less than 5%, uh, sometimes as low as uh, 2%. Now, what does it say? Uh, one quick uh, message that we can infer is that we are, we are our primarily customers is our internal uh, delivery functions itself and not the end customer. And then, and hence, you know, the, the, the delivery functions will interface with the customer. We hear the response from them. Uh, however, the way I see it is that we are a little disconnect from the what from what the customer really uh, needs us to understand uh, in the in the quality department. We have to be advocates of the customer, what the customer wants. Uh, we have to make sure that the products and services that we deliver uh, are valuable to the customer. And the best way to do that is to really understanding directly from the customer on what their aspirations is. And in that sense how should a quality professional transform i think your question was what are the skills and competencies that we need to uh, we need to imbibe what's the change that we need in terms of skills and competencies uh, a few years back i was working with uh, honeywell aerospace and and i still vividly remember uh, one statement uh, that our ceo at that time told us uh, a quality professional needs to be a doctor 
diagnosing the problem and advocate advocating between uh, the customers and 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 the delivery teams and a teacher uh, training on on the quality philosophies management philosophies improving the delivery processes etc i think from there if you can slightly augment and extend these roles uh, for the digital era of today what we want uh, to do uh, primarily is a role of an innovator uh, understanding what the customer needs and translating that into a language uh, that a product and services organization will understand uh, problem solvers now many times there are multiple perspectives multiple diverse uh, stakeholders in this entire game you need to identify and quickly resolve problems and in the same sense uh, negotiator as well so these are the possible roles that quality need to have now to 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 effectively play these roles uh, before learning something we have to actually unlearn a few things the first thing that we need to le- unlearn is checklist based uh, quality assurance are you doing this a b c d items i think you are good uh, I think that worked uh, for a very long time, but but in the current era of uncertainty, again connecting back to my previous uh, statement and also the opening introductory remarks that uh, Dr. Sharafsky has given, uh, the current world that we are operating in, uh, I don't think things are so well uh, defined and determined. Many things are evolving on a very very daily basis, so that calls for a lot of innovation, a lot of exploration. So that checklist based QA cannot really uh, work. Uh, second thing that we need to unlearn is over importance on rituals rituals of course needed I, i'm not a, a anti ritual uh, person but if we forget the intent of things and then uh, solely depend on our on the rituals alone are we doing our daily stand up meetings are we doing our management review meetings okay management review meeting done okay fine uh, is the ceo communication done is the quality policy published done okay Uh, these are all required but with an intent so if we forget the intent and focus uh, only on the rituals i think that's something that can uh, easily be a killer to the quality function and third i think that we can unlearn is is box solution now uh, while some of the products can still be mass manufactured many of the solutions today are custom made a bmw car is custom made for a for a user uh, a cell phone is custom made for a group of users Uh, any service that you talk about uh, be it loans be it insurance these are all custom made for customers so the box solution uh, in other words if we have a mindset to look at our products and services as a box solution that may not work for today so what should we learn i think we should learn more about the business we should learn more about business agility we should more about transformation from a project way of working to a product way of working we should also really learn about analytics how to apply the power of analytics uh, in quality uh, to really understand some of the inherent problems which may not be otherwise revealed if you if you look at uh, metrics on the whole other finer things could be customer experience creativity uh, relationship management some of these soft skills can also help us go a long way forward uh, by playing our role uh, what is expected out of us in a digital era Thank you, Sherry. And indeed, now listening to you, for example, me that I come from the compliance sector, and I listen to the topics or the, the things that you have mentioned, like the checkbox that doesn't work anymore, and following a list that is not tailor made for the client. Clearly, I think this is a a very good tip that we could apply in many other uh, areas, not only in quality management, but beyond that. I think it's very important. And I was wondering, I don't know, Ralph, Sherry, if I'm sure like you, well, I have, I know that you train and manage big teams and you have a lot of people reporting to you. And I'm pretty much sure that out of the almost 300 people that we have today uh, watching us, there might be a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, attendees that would like to have a, maybe a chance to work in this sector or have an experience in quality management. So. From your experience, what would you say, or what would be your advice in terms of skills? What should people learn if they want to have uh, an opportunity in this sector? What are your, I don't know, maybe, yes, advices that you can give that would be important? Okay, okay. If you allow to me, again, I will back to the point, it's, um, it's organization culture. Uh, If we are talking about the people, uh, we have two kinds of people, people inside the organization and people outside the the organization. Uh, uh, We can focus on customer needs, but also we have to adapt our quality management philosophy 
and what is our principle what is our model we can't hear it and this is can you can find it as example of bmw you can find it in rolls rice and the many cars are not adapting itself for the customer because they have the the own rule quality management i will try to adapt myself so again we, if we are talking about the people uh, people have to believe this is what the culture of the company believe in the quality management you can't tell them this is the, the quality management manual just to follow it. they have to see this is following this is making added value for the organization for the product for themselves it's not a matter of just put some rules some checklist and just do it what is the added value of this checklist this checklist can 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 be changes i can make a new one it's really uh, what is uh, behind the quality management why we are making this quality management why we are trying to enhance our quality management and uh, as we know all uh, about dimming cycle plan do check act we have to check that is why we have to check every time are 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 this is enough the quality management or this is my targeted for the quality uh, i have to compare them with the others even uh, the other competitors even i'm um, the, the market leader but there are some uh, also as the, he mentioned is the digital era digital era now is changing everything not every day it's every hour you can while you are talking there is maybe an application just rise and you change all the game and some somewhere it's uh, many application come in one day and change the market and then they totally change the customer the ch customer need changing in one day so uh, also i have to adapt myself with my quality manual to be flexible i can't put it this is a quality ma management system i will follow no it's have be space to customize the needs and adapt the quality management system what i'm going to focus in near and we have to uh, to look in the future um, not only what is happening now because uh, many changes in the technology and now we are having many new technologies we can code about cloud computing internet of things we can big that many structure so it's quality management i think it's not not related about learning people the quality management is about believing uh, in quality management from the people it's um, not something to do it's something uh, to come every day to live with it thank you yeah i'd like to add something on, on this topic um you know if, if you did run more than 1000 audits in your life you know the value of an audit is not the value of a checklist <laughs> so you asked also what what is the experience to an auditor why should we become an expert for instance for a pcb um, certified certification and run this on customer side um, to give the, the audience a little bit of advice on, on where to focus and, and how to run this. So the real value from an assessment, from my point of view, um, comes out be, uh, from the discussion um, between the controllers, between the points of discussion. You know, it's it's, it's a live discussion. It's, it makes it really worse to the people joining in an assessment. Of course, as a certified PCB auditor, it's quite important. You know your profession. You know how to do it. You know how about your um, special question controls from the point of view of data protection, information security, compliance, whatever. But the, the live discussion between the controls, this makes it really, really valuable to the customer. And uh, this is a matter to experience. So we develop our younger um, assessment leaders from a junior level to a senior level to a principal level. And we take this really serious. You know, we have more than 450 auditors in place actually running so many um, uh, assessments out there in, in several sectors. And especially in Germany, um, we have um, this is also affected by, by law, for instance, the critical sectors, the critical customers um, are bringing to law um, by the so-called Information Security um, Act and law. Um, and this has been provided from the governance um, to, to rise the level of security in the critical sectors like energy, logistics, um, power and so on. Um, but still, a lot of work is to be done. So we really need more assessment leader, more auditors in, in, in the field, 
So I, I really appreciate everyone who's interested um, to get into this kind of profession. Just start with it. But finally, you will grow uh, in the daily business. And finally, you have to become some kind of a sovereign business consultant. It's not only a, becoming a certified ISO 2701 lead auditor, 27701 um, in lead implementer and all that stuff. I really did join it. It's BECB. I really appreciate this kind of education. But finally, this is a real life. And you can get all this experience if you just do it, get out into to the customers and run this assessment and become better and better from assessment to assessment. This is quite, it's quite important to rise customer satisfaction and customer ex experience. If you ha have a good customer experience, if we give you a call and the next call and the next call, you will never get rid of a customer. <laughs> It's, it's, it's incredible because they, they want to get this advice to save money and time. They want to avoid wrong decisions in the business and they want to um, get your experience into their companies. It's, it's much the same important as running the original assessment. And from my experience, clients are totally overwhelmed by the volume of data and the number of processes they have to manage inside a company and they need some kind of guide. Of course, we as an assessment leader certified somehow, you know, um, we get in and we are the guides and say, um, is it possible to run um, new um, IT solutions like Microsoft 365? We have huge discussions in Germany uh, with the supervisor authorities whether this is feasible to the companies, but also to public organizations or not. In Germany, for instance, um, the supervisor authority actually discussed that 365 will no more longer allow to schools. And this brings a huge challenge to all the public organizations. And of course, even the private organizations, the companies, also big companies, are asking themselves, hey, can we trust and can we, can we, are we, do we have to fear about moving our processes to cloud solutions or not? And the same with management solutions, it's the same discussion. You have to run it on-prem or you have to run it in somewhere in a data center, in a cloud service. And um, yeah, they feel very, very uncomfortable with that discussion. And we are the guides who say, okay, just go for it. And this is uh, these are the evidences, these are our statements and you can rely on this. And we, of course, we rely with money on this. And so the um, companies really appreciate this kind of yeah, consulting services. And as a PSCB expert, you really know how to do it. You learn it inside the, the trainings. When you, when you go somewhere to a classroom training, I really appreciate the classroom trainings. Yes, now, of course, after um, the pandem pandemic effect, to restart this classroom courses because I really love this exchange to, our, to other PCB experts if you go three or five days on on-site training courses. It's, it's really cool because you really learn a lot beside um, the, um, the standard stuff, um, what, what you will be learned and trained on by being the PCB. And yeah, I would really appreciate also if we have more exchange uh, between the certified PCB expert and, and in the meaning of international um, exchange, because if, if we look in, in the press media, for instance, and in all the training institutes inside Germany, it's like a germ bubble, you know, and it's really important to open your mind, exchange with guys in India, in Africa, in US, and so on, even in China, and so on. Say, so, you know, I'm just working in a project with Ernst and Young, for instance, in China. And so interesting to exchange beside the, the official topic and to learn from each other. And this makes it so interesting and worthful for the next coming customer. Indeed, I think uh, international cooperation interaction is fundamental. It's a bit of what we are doing today here. We are the four of us based in different yeah. countries, different backgrounds. And I think More that's really reaching. So it's good yeah. that we have these opportunities and these platforms to do so. And thank you very much. This was really interesting. Uh, so thank you very much to the three of you. And I just want to remember uh, to remind the audience that they can drop some questions on the chat box. I have seen already a few very interesting, a lot about AI, artificial intelligence. So be ready for that, guys, in a few minutes. Uh, but now I will I will continue. I, I will go back to Sharif 
what we were talking before about cybersecurity. And I would like to ask you how to create a control matrix for quality management and cybersecurity. Oh, this is, is uh, a very hard question. This has become a mandatory. Um, I think uh, it's not uh, an option now to create this matrix. Uh, especially, there is more and more requirements every day. There is um, many uh, laws and regulations are coming. Uh, and we have to make this matrix to adapt to what the changes are required. Uh, for example, um, from early this year, we have uh, 2002, uh, which is changing all the metrics of the information security, uh, starting from the name, it was information technology, security techniques, code of practicing information security control. So it's with about information technology, security techniques, code of practicing. Now it's about information security, cyber security, privacy protection, and the information security controls. So it's it's a huge difference, will affect all over the world if we are talking about how to manage the quality of the information. And they added uh, 11 uh, new controls. Uh, 24 has been merged. 59 has been updated. Uh, we are talking, as you said, about new technologies, new domains, machine learning, artificial intelligence, one of the important techni technologies we are talking about. There is many big data, blockchain, what is happening about digital currency, how this is are going, cloud computing, and from, uh, IoT, Internet of Things. Uh, all of this is coming with customer. Uh, people are more depending on this new technology. So we are talking about what is about data privacy, personal information regulations, uh, and where is data are uh, dealing? Uh, are I'm going to deal it in, in one country or many countries? What is the regulation different between us? Um, each organization or each company must understand how to build this matrix. The first thing is, is how we are going to deal with it. Uh, how we are going to deal with digital transformations. What is the required of quality for this digital transformation? Uh, without making a restriction on the business or in the transformation, we can't put just controls. Uh, let's put a lot of controls, then we can stop the business. Also, one of the important things is this uh, controls matrix return of investment. Uh, because again, the business itself is about the investment. What is I'm going to, to return it? So don't put uh, 100 controls. Um, the, the management will like to hear about uh, information security and cybersecurity, but also they hear it, we ask for more and more. Uh, so if we are going to put more controls, you have to consider how uh, each control, uh, and this is the real challenge, to put the minimum controls to cover the maximum needs or the maximum points. Uh, how to think about the whole picture. Don't think about uh, each point uh, as itself. No, I have to, 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 to look for the quality management system and the information management system as uh, as a one uh, solutions uh, uh, as a one system so if i'm thinking about putting this controls how this is going to affect the quality can i change this control to put another solution or alternative solution which can cover more um I think each organization has to build a clear roadmap for the objective from that is why we are going to uh, quality management. Uh, why I'm about quality management? To put just quality management or to change the manage uh, the quality of the of my organization. Um, I think this is, must be clear from the first day. Uh, we have to understand what is the regulation we have to follow. What are the standards we like to have? We maybe. Uh, what is the market direction in this point? 
uh, are we going to to make something uh, new are we going to lead something in in this part or we are going to follow just what is asking from the aggregation uh, a good uh, gap assessment uh, understanding the internal and external factoring using any tools like SWAT or whatever uh, help the organization to understand uh, the choose criteria for these controls. We have to understand how we are going to choose uh, these controls to build our own matrix. Uh, we can take the matrix which is, are from other organization. Even we take it as an example, already made the matrix, we have to adapt it to our culture, our purpose, our objectives. This is um, are the main point, uh, how this matrix can be effective matrix, not to put just some controls and who are going to, what is the rules and responsibility for this matrix, uh, how we are going to measure this matrix, we, how, how do we, we can automate uh, this matrix or not, uh, how to build the, not the matrix, uh, uh, and put it, no, we have to build the maturity model for this matrix, how we are going to to to, to enhance it, uh, how to, to are going to make this matrix are flexible to be changed and to understand each control in this matrix, where it's effect and understand that is if I, I change something in this matrix, it will affect many parts. So I think building the matrix is a really change not to to implement it or to make it work is the right building is the main focus point in this point okay thank you very much Sharif. and uh we have 13 minutes left so i will raise the last question from my side and then i will move to the question from the audience i hope we will have time because there are at least two that i really want to to ask you but uh last one for uh ralph I would like to ask you in terms of the future, uh, what do you think or could be the disruptions impacting the quality function, function in the near future for you? Well, yeah, thanks. Um, for the disruptions uh, impacting the quality function in the near future, I think will be a less problem of, you know, availability of technology or of infrastructure supply or even of cyber attacks. You know, everyone is talking about cyber attacks and we receive actually a lot of orders running cyber security assessments, but it's not a, it's a big topic. It's also not the matter of budget, of money, or of the willingness of the companies to increase quality assurance. Even these are all possible impacts. Of course, we do not need to underestimate them, but we have a much more stronger topic, which can become some kind of disruption of impacting the quality function. Because from my point of view, all companies are currently looking to recruit and retain the current staff. It's about people. It's about people in the companies. The excessive staff turnover driven by, for example, lack of appreciation of staff, as well of exaggerated salary increases by market competitors is so strange actually to solve their problem with money, lead to quality being lost in companies through knowledge drain. We can introduce as much documentation and quality management system in companies as we want, as we can run with our resources, but without a stable workforce and the stable conditions inside a company. And I guess this is also a little bit about the cultural thing inside the companies, about employee branding, keeps the, stable, the staff stable. We will never be able to increase quality in a company we can run as many audits and assessments as we, was, as we like. And from my point of view, to sum it up, technology is really exciting. Data is about money. The companies more and more understand that data is really money, but without people who are enthusiastic about their job, every day get in the company and work, the company will have no future. And let me tell you, finally, um, to the audience and to, to all of you guys, you know, one of the most famous famous quality managements we have in place is, of course, yeah, you know, general data protection regulations, the GDPR. And of yes. course, I remind you all about the fourth birthday of GDPR takes place tomorrow. So just think about GDPR tomorrow in your environment and 
um, from my perspective also GDPR becomes some kind of new gold standard not only for personal data but for all data and even the not personal data all the stuff you know with the with the numbers and features in the company and all the, the drafts and, and and drawings and what's what really the intellectual called the intellectual property of the company we have an additional act in place in Germany um, which handles over this data um, so we have those two standards the, 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 the act for the um, intellectual property on one hand and on the other hand for the personal data so we have acts for all kind of data in Germany and this is quite cool to enforce to the rise of management systems and uh, I really appreciate um, to get some more in education also to my staff to, to my assessments leaders this for the 50 assessment leaders out of 600 cyber experts in society security to bring them to more education to rise their expert level and to become a senior and some kind of business analyst and business expert um, to run this special assessments just beside. So hopefully this was an important impulse to the one or other in the audience. Thanks. Uh, allow to me that is a very important thing is that EBR uh, and as I mentioned the new uh, 2002 uh, controls are covering this and uh, uh, we are waiting um, in, in the end of this year for new version of 2001 will will work more and will focus more about uh, data protection and personal data protection i think uh, i agree totally agree with ralph uh, it's now about the data and information uh, this is the main concept now about the business it's not about uh, uh, it's exactly. about people. Exactly. I, I just uh, explained. Totally. I, I you know, I just explained to to a CEO here in the company um, where, where, for instance, uh, ISO 27001 with Annex 15 for supplier control meets the GDPR with um, Article uh, Section 28.3. So the, 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 um, the standards are meeting in some points and that makes really a lot of sense to, to customers to say, okay, how many time and money do we have to invest to rise our level to the perspective of our clients, of our customers. And this is the most important fact. The, the customers of our clients, they are asking for the standards. They are asking for a certification. Of course, everyone's aware about the regulatory aspects, you know, but the, the own customer was money is coming in the company. This is a, is a big point where we can set up our assessments and make the things really, really worthful to the companies. Totally agree with you. Yes, I hope everybody's taking notes of all the things that we're saying here because it is really interesting. <laughs> Nothing to be missed. And maybe now that we have a few minutes left, I would like to go to the question that the, the audience left in the chat box. And there is one, maybe I could start with Trishid. This question is about AI, as I mentioned before. And I have the feeling that today we cannot talk about technology and digital trends without talking about AI. And we have some questions, indeed, quite a few, very similar. Um, don't refer to the fact that maybe ISO do not include AI in the in the policy. So they're saying, or they are, they are asking how audits can be conducted in this area in particular, and how can you get advantage of new technologies like AI to perform better in, in the quality management uh, area. In okay. perspective, I, I sorry, go ahead. So I'll, I'll very briefly answer the latter part of the question because uh, the, the former part of the question about uh, how can audits better cover AI, I think uh, the experts can speak about it that they'll audit it. I can answer the second part, like how AI uh, or, or uh, digital can enable uh, quality. Um, again, to build upon the previous uh, comment that I spoke about, uh, AI is inherently, what it means is that we are using humongous amount of data to model real life experiences. So if I take about if I, if I take the example of a, a driverless car uh, or augmented reality, what we are doing is that the experiences of what a human has, uh, which can be mimicked, which can be learned by a machine, is reproduced and then uh, it is fed into the machine for the machine itself to repeat the transaction. This happens through sophisticated statistics and algorithms which run in the background through hyper computing, uh, you know, devices. 
uh, how can we take advantage of this? How can we take advantage of AI uh, in some of the things that we do as uh, quality professionals? Uh, very quickly, a couple of things. One is, uh, especially in the audits, uh, many of the things that we do as from a hygiene point of view, for instance, uh, whether the processes are followed, whether the workflows are uh, being uh, being uh, be, be being executed in the right manner, uh, whether we are taking the right feedbacks and approvals as needed, uh, whether we really understand the customer perspective and translating that to the product knowledge, some of these things can be very uh, really automated through the power of artificial intelligence. We can get quick insights and then uh, you know take decisions based on that. Uh, second, uh, slightly related is the power of uh, using the power of data analytics. Uh, data analytics are broadly uh, classified into exploratory data analytics, which will uh, kind of explain what is going on. Uh, diagnostics which will tell us uh, why it is going on. And also predictive and prescriptive, which will help us to predict the future. Uh, if we use these data, the power of data analytics in the right sense, we will be able to find problems for several of the quality issues that we have today. Like how many defects are we likely to end up with in a product release? Uh, what's the customer satisfaction uh, based on all their interactions throughout the life cycle journey, are they going to be satisfied, dissatisfied? If so, what can we do today to control it in process rather than living with a dissatisfied customer? Thank you very much, uh, Rashid. I don't know, Ralph, you, you wanted to mention something uh, about this topic as well? Yeah, you know, I, AI is a big topic. AI is really a big topic. Um, to me, as a scientist, we use, of course, AI in several environments, but not in the original um, c um, management systems. It's, it's more beside. Um, for instance, if, if you combine SIEM systems with SOC systems, in addition with artificial, artificial intelligence solutions, um, for instance, from Israeli guys, um, to identify uh, where you can breach environments very easily um, because they are out of focus you know it's not the top um, gateway security it's a security it's the endpoint which has been coming a little bit out of control where, where the people have more administrative rights for instance and to identify if you have an environment with, with 10,000 clients for instance in 200 companies uh, you you need some cool tools based on AI to identify those endpoint uh, weak systems where the attackers can entry and get access to that kind of data. So by this, we can rise KPIs, we can make it measurable, we can make it traceable, we can use AI solutions in addition to the management systems to bring more, you know, yeah, um, more value to the customer that they accept it as a full package. It's not only setting up the management systems with all the palace policies, procedures, and work instructions. Of course, we do it perfectly as, as expected, but the additional work with the discussion and the additional tooling and the additional rise the security level, that makes it really, really valuable to the customers. Thank you very much. I don't know if we have time for one more, maybe very quick question, but maybe for Sharif in one minute, because related to the implementation of new technologies in your daily work and your assessment, etc., someone is asking, what are the challenges to adapt these new technologies in developing countries, for example, because it's not the same maybe to work in country A and country B. So do you face this challenge? How, how do you overcome it? I think there is three main challenges and this one is the regulations. Most of the can the non development countries they didn't have regulation to fit with the new technologies. You just bring I will use digital currency, I will put big data, I will so it's one of them is the regulations. You have to, to adapt the regulation before using uh, the new technologies. This is a very uh, main point from my point of view second one is the infrastructure you just didn't uh, put uh, new technology and then having a problem and third one uh, is what is the added value from the new uh, technology yeah you, you don't have to to get a car with 300 kilometer speed and your limit is 100 kilo you, you don't need it i can't buy a mercedes with 300 uh, kilometers per hour while I can't go more than is this new technology will make a added value uh, for my business or not 
this is, is uh, I think, this is the three main challenges we face because uh, it's a new model. I would like this new technology. This new technology will make no added uh, point for your business, but people would like to to have the new the new technology for having the new technology, not what is added. And I think the governance uh, point about the regulation is one of the core uh, challenges we have it in many different countries. It's very interesting that you answer this, and we will close. But for me, that I don't I don't work in the quality management field as such. But I do work with tech companies, helping them entering into new markets. And if you have, you would have asked me this question, I would have also said regulations as the first and most important issue in terms of entering and developing technologies in, in developing countries. So it's it's very interesting to see that no matter your background, where we work, there are a lot of things in common, and regulation is clearly one hot topic. Um, so well, I think that's it. I'm sorry, I feel it was too short, honestly. But well, we have come to the end. So I would like to say to say thank you very much to the three of you for your time, to to the organization BCB for organizing this session as well, and to all the attendees who joined us today, who raised questions. I'm sorry I couldn't I couldn't uh, go through all of them. There were quite a few, but I hope you also enjoyed as much as we did. And um, see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, PCB. Bye. 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 Bye.